Hi, I'm Joby and welcome to a Node 7 Electronics video. This video will be the first in a multi-part series on how to use KiCad. So in this video we'll be going over schematic capture and we'll work our way over to designing and then ordering your own circuit boards. First off, we'll start with how you can get KiCad. It's a free program so you can head over to KiCad-PCB.org, link will be down in the description. Click download, select your operating system, download the installer and install the program. Once you've done that, you can run it, and we're going to create a new project by going File, New Project, New Project. Now you're going to select a location to save the project in. I'll be doing it under Documents, KiCad. Create a new folder for your project. open the folder and click save. Oh, first you need to name the name the project. To start with schematic capture, you're going to click this first button here and this will open the schematic capturing program. To start by placing down your components, click the third button down here, place component. Select anywhere on your screen and then pick your part. I'm going to be making a simple ATtiny development board, so I'll be going to Atmel and finding the part that I'm looking for. I'm going to be using the DIP version, the dual inline package, the through hole kind, so just make sure that you select the right package. And then the part will be attached to your cursor to place it down in the schematic, just click, and there you go. You can zoom in with the plus. You can zoom in, sorry, with your scroll wheel on your mouse and you can pan around by pressing the scroll wheel on your mouse. So now we're going to put down some power. So you're going to click the fourth button down, place power port, uh, expand the power section and we'll start with ground. Place that beneath the ground pin on your package. Don't connect it and then click one more time and we're going to place a 5 volt power port. Now to connect these power pins to the pins on the package you're going to click this green line here place wire and go from one of these points together and that will connect them. If you try to connect it to nothing, you'll see that it won't work. In order to get it to connect to nothing, you have to double click. So, and if you want to route a more complicated trace, then you can move it, click, and that creates an anchor to where you clicked. So you can route more complicated curves. For now, we're just going to be doing a straight line. Now let's add a reset switch. So we're, to do that, we're going to need to add a part. And sometimes finding parts can be a little bit difficult, but let's see if we can search. There's a search bar at the top there. Let's see. There we go. Push button. That's what I'm looking for. So again, click OK and you'll place the part. I'll place it nearby. If I need to rotate, I can rotate it by pressing R on my keyboard. I can also do that to parts that are down. To move parts, you can press M. And to grab parts, you can press G. And that'll keep the wire attached, so it'll drag the sort of trace there. So we're going to connect this switch to the reset line on this microcontroller with a simple wire. And I happen to know that these microcontrollers, the reset pin, is uh, 
active low. So when you press this button, you want this to get pulled down to ground. So to keep it up at uh, positive and keep this thing not resetting, we need to place a pull-up resistor. So we can place a component. And lots of parts are under device. So resistor is just simply R. And we'll place that right here. You can connect it with a wire. And when you run one wire into another wire, it automatically places a junction. Sometimes it won't, like in a situation right there. And if you need to add a junction there, you can just click the place junction and place it there. I don't need that, so I'll undo those. Now to edit the value of components, you hover over the component and press V. This lets you edit the value field. So we need a 10K resistor here, so we'll type in 10K. If you want to edit other things about the part, just hover over it and press E. Select the component, and you can see you can edit more things. You can change the chip name, the reference, and you can change the orientation and size. You can also change fonts and whatnot, make things invisible, whatever you need to do. Now we need to connect this up to 5 volts, and we could just draw a wire over to this one, or we can just copy this one. So hover over this 5 volts and press C. That'll move it to above this resistor, and then you're going to draw another wire. Now we need this to be connected to ground. So we'll do the same thing, copying ground. And this doesn't really match up. I could have it below, but may as well just have it in line. So we'll just rotate it so that it's in line with the switch. And draw the wire. Now I'm going to add a crystal. So we are going to place component. Search for crystal. Select OK. Rotate it. And you can see this doesn't really fit well. So now we're going to rewire this. Switch to ground, pull up resistor, and connect that to the reset pin. Now we can move this in. Now we're going to wire this up. So select the wire, draw a new wire. There we go. Now we need to add some capacitors. Select wire, connect that, connect that, and you can see that it automatically put the junctions in. We'll connect these, and we'll connect this here. Now we need to change the value of these capacitors. And I just did that by hovering over the part and pressing B. We'll change the value of this crystal. 8 megahertz, and again hovering over the crystal and pressing V. Now these uh, letter and then question mark, you don't need to worry about that yet. Once we're closer to finishing the schematic, we can fill those out automatically. So now let's attach some of the I.O. Place component. It's important to keep in mind that when you're using these ground pins, what you're basically doing is establishing an invisible wire. So you can't see it, but this ground here is connected to this one here. Now we're going to connect our in your IC zone. So basic comment, I know, and then IC6. What I do is just this is a lot of wires off. And then using this place global label, select the end of this wire. And see here it's MISO. We'll type in MISO. Yeah. So 
So now we can delete this part by hovering over it and pressing the delete key. And we can select all of this by drag clicking to select all of this. Now we have it in our selection, we can press the rotate key and rotate this whole selection. And I'll just move it off to the side. Let's rotate it back. There we go. We'll just move it off to over here, out of the way. Now, on the actual device itself, by placing a global label, we can say, oh, there's M-O-S-I, so we'll create a wire. Okay. Now we'll create a global label, M-O-S-I, rotate, now what that's doing is essentially the same thing that we were doing over with the grounds and the 5 volts. This RSG, or sorry, this SCK is invisibly connected to this one. You just can't see the wires. It just keeps things like this neater. Now we'll do the same thing for RSG. We can also copy these things so we don't need to type them out manually. So we'll rotate that. Draw in the wire. So now we have three LEDs in here, reset switch, the crystal, and of course the programming header. Now let's put on IO headers. So we're going to place new parts, go into the con vector section. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine available pins. We'll grab a 12 pin connector so that we can have those nine pins as well as a VCC and maybe two grounds, something like that. So we'll create wires. It will be ground and this one will be VCC. So for the ground, We'll just draw a wire over to this ground because that's convenient. As for VCC, we can grab this 5 volts. Rotate it so it's in the correct orientation, place it down, and connect it with the wire. You can see here there's three things connecting and there's no junction, so to tidy it up a little bit, we can create a junction right there. Now we are pretty much ready, actually. We're done with the schematic. It's quite easy to do. If you want to make it a little bit more tidy, you can create this place graphic lines. So we'll create one around here. And this lets you kind of uh, section off your schematic and make it a little bit easier to understand what each section is. It's more important in more complicated designs, but it can be, it's good practice to do. So we'll say, there we go, click OK, there, put that down, and we'll select all of this, and we'll just move it off to there. There, organize this a little bit, there we go. Now the majority of the circuit is pretty much done and we're now we're going to sort out all of these problems like you can see, well they're not really problems but just these blank tags by clicking this little button here, annotate schematic components. These default settings are fine so we'll just click annotate, select OK and there you go. Now you can see that each different part has its different number R1, we find a different resistor R2, R3, R4. In the next video, I will show you how you can start to design your own circuit board. So anyway, thanks for watching this Node7 Electronics video. If you found it useful, please like, comment, or subscribe.